prime numbers come up all the time on the GRE and GMAT. And before you can start answering the questions, there are a few basic things you need to know. And I'm gonna tell you all of them in this video. First thing you need to know is what is a prime? As I've written down below, a prime number is a number divisible only by one and that number. And this is why the number one is not a prime number. This is the first most common mistake, thinking that one is a prime number. Why is it not a prime number? Because it's only divisible by one, whereas a prime number needs to be divisible by two things, itself and one. So one's not a prime number. What numbers are prime though? Here's a list that I want you to remember. It's the first 10 prime numbers. And in case it's not clear already, what makes a prime special? Let's take the number 11. You don't find it in any other times tables. It's not in the two times tables, not in the five times tables. It can't be found in the times tables of any other number. And that's another way to think about primes. Notice something else. All of the primes are odd except for two. Two is an even prime number. And that's something the GRE and GMAT likes to test. So yes, I want you to memorize these first 10 prime numbers. I also want you to understand what makes them prime. The fact that they don't appear in any other times tables and the fact they have no factors aside from one and itself. Using this fact, let's do this real ETS GRE official question. Can you tell me what is bigger? Quantity A, the least prime number greater than 24, or quantity B, the greatest prime number less than 28. Now this might take a while, except for those students who've memorized the prime numbers on the right. And we can see that the smallest or least prime number that's bigger than 24 is 29. 27 is not a prime number, it's divisible by three, for example. 25 is not a prime number, it's divisible by five. So the least prime number, quantity A, that's greater than 24 is 29. Quantity B, the greatest prime number that's less than 28 is, which of these primes is the closest one below 28? 23. So quantity A is bigger than quantity B. And we got that through, yes, knowing what a prime number is, but also memorizing these first 10 prime numbers. Let's move on to the next question. And I wanna stress again that prime numbers are an absolute favorite for the GRE and GMAT test makers. And also they spring up in weird places in real life. For example, there are certain insects, I believe, that hibernate for a prime number amount of years each time. And why is that? Because their predators come at even intervals. And if you hibernate for a prime number amount of years, then you will never be there at the same time as one of the predators, because a prime number is not in an even time table. Anyway, prime numbers are also used in encryption, I believe. So it comes up in real life, but for the GRE and GMAP, I'm explaining the basics you need to know. After completing this video, do go on to watch my prime factorization video, where you can learn much more about advanced techniques involving primes. Anyway, this question here is quite advanced already. The question asks, which of the following numbers are prime? Tick all that apply. And this could come up in the GMAT or GRE. And you might be thinking, well, in the GRE, we could just test loads and loads of numbers because we have a calculator. But if you don't know the following method, you're gonna be wasting a whole lot of time. So how can we check which of these numbers on screen are prime? For example, 51. Do we have to check like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine until we give up? No. How to check if 51's prime? All you have to do is check if 51 is divisible by prime numbers, like the prime numbers you can see on screen on the right. You might ask me, what about checking for number like six or a number like nine? Why only the primes? Because if a number is not divisible by two, for example, the first prime, then it's not gonna be divisible by six. If it's not divisible by three, the second prime, then it's not gonna be divisible by nine. So that's the first amazing secret. You only need to check if a number is divisible by prime numbers to check if it's prime. You don't need to test out all the numbers. Second amazing fact, 
you only need to check the prime numbers that are smaller than the square root of the number. Or said another way, we check the primes, say for 51, we check 2, we check 3, we check 5, we check 7, but we don't check 11 because 11 squared is bigger than 51. So I know that's a bit complicated, but let me say it again. You check the prime numbers, you check if it's divisible by the prime numbers, either using a calculator or long division, but you stop the moment you reach a prime whose square is bigger than the number. Let me demonstrate with the first couple of numbers and then you'll see what I mean. So 51, let's check, is it divisible by two? No, because it's not even. Is it divisible by three? Yes, and we don't even need a calculator because five plus one is digits, add up to six, and that's a multiple of three, so we know for sure it's divisible by three. So we can confidently say 51 is not prime because it appears in the three times tables. It's divisible by three. So we stop there and say it's not prime, okay? Let's move on to the next number, 71. For 71, we're gonna check two, three, five, and seven. Okay, let's check two. No, because 71 is not even. Let's check three. No, because the digits don't add up to a multiple of three. Seven plus one is eight. Five, no, it doesn't end in a five or a zero. And seven, no, because 71 is not in the seven times tables. Seven times 10 is 70. And why do we stop at seven? Why don't we check 11, 13, 17? Because 11 squared, 121, is bigger than 71. So we don't need to check 11. So just testing those four simple numbers, and some of them were really easy to check, like two, three, and five, we can already definitively guaranteed say that 71 must be prime. And just think, if you were trying this question without this method, you might have been there for an extra couple of minutes testing out 11s and 12s and, I don't know, 17s and 21s. You might have been checking for ages, but now just checking these four simple numbers without even a calculator, we can say it's prime. So 71 is prime. 91, what prime numbers are we going to check? Remember, only checking prime because we don't need to check other numbers. We're going to again check 2, 3, 5, and 7 because 11 squared is too big. Okay, 91 is not even, so not 2. 9 plus 1 is 10, so it doesn't divide by 3. It doesn't divide by 5. Does it divide by 7? Well, you can use a calculator or use long division, but 7 does go into 91, and it goes in 13 times. People think 91 and 51 are primes because they look prime, but 91 is not prime. It's 7 times 13. Okay, what numbers are we going to check for 131 to check if it's a prime number or not? We're going to check 2, 3, 5, 7, and 11, because 11 squared, 121, is less than 131. So we do check 11 as well. We don't check 13, because 13 squared is 169, too big. So we're going to check 2, 3, 5, 7, and 11. Not divisible by 2, it's not even, not divisible by 3, the digits add up to 5. Not by 5. By 7, you can do long division, but... I know 140 is in the seven times table, so 131 won't be. And 11, no, 121, the next one up is 132. So obviously you could use a calculator, but I've ascertained already that it's prime, and look how quick that was. Incredibly quick. So 131 is prime. And finally, 171. What numbers are we gonna check? We're gonna check the primes all the way up to, and including, 13. Because 13 squared is 169, which is still less than 171 but 17 squared is too far. So we check all of those numbers and we can say that no, it's not divisible by any of them. Again, if you're not sure on some of them, like seven or 11, you can use a calculator or use long division. I've done a video on each of those. I actually think this is an amazing shortcut for checking a number is prime. If you like it too, please do leave me a comment and a like. But we're gonna move on to the final question in this video, prime numbers 101 and we're drawing on an official question yet again. Pause the video, have a go if you like. It's a harder level question this time. The square root of xy is a prime number. xy is even, and x is greater than four times y, which is greater than zero. What's bigger, quantity a, y, or quantity b, one? This question is testing a fact I mentioned much earlier on in the video, and I've written down below, the GRE and GMAT love this fact. There's only one even prime number. That's what you need to know. 
The square root of xy, they said, is a prime number. And they said xy is even. And the root of an even square must be even. And there's only one even prime number. So when they say xy is even, and we square root it to get a prime number, the only possibility is that the square root of xy is 2. It can't be that the square root of xy is a different prime number, an odd prime number like 3 or 5, because xy would not be even in that case. When you square it, you wouldn't get an even number. So the square root of xy must be 2, because 2 is the only even prime number. That's a big giveaway. That's the main thing that they're trying to test here. You can try out other numbers, but they won't work. Only two will work. And I've done the next step here immediately, which is get rid of the square root. We don't like that square root. It's confusing. So let's just immediately square both sides. Squaring both sides gets rid of the square root on the left, and 2 squared is 4. So we know x times y is 4. But that wasn't the question. The question was about y. How can we use this inequality on the right that x is greater than 4 times y to work out what y is or what y could be? Well, for me, the easiest method at this point is to pick numbers. After I pick numbers and show you how that works, I will solve it algebraically. But for me, picking numbers is the most intuitive. We know x times y is 4. So we could try out numbers. Is it 2 times 2? The problem is it can't be 2 times 2 because x has to be 4 times bigger than y. Look at the inequality at the top. x has to be 4 times bigger than y, or more than 4 times bigger than y. So it can't be 2 and 2. It can't even be 4 and 1. 4 times 1 is 4, but x, the 4, wouldn't be more than 4 times bigger than y, the 1. So through testing numbers, we can ascertain that x must be an even bigger number than 4, and y must be some sort of decimal. For example, x could be 8, and y could be a half. 8 times a half is 4, so xy does equal 4, like the equation says, and x is more than 4 times bigger than y. But there are other examples you might think of, like 16 and a quarter. x would still be more than 4 times bigger than y, and x times y still equals 4. So through picking numbers, we can ascertain that y must be a decimal beneath 1. In other words, quantity b is bigger. There are some students out there who won't like that picking numbers approach, even though I think it's amazing. And they'll say, I'm going to do this algebraically. So how would we do it algebraically? Well, let's see the equation we have, x times y equals 4. Let's isolate the x so that we can substitute it in to the inequality. Divide both sides by y, and we get x equals 4 over y. Substituting that into the inequality at the top of the screen, we know that 4 over y must be greater than 4y. Now we can cross multiply, and the reason we can do this without flipping the sign is that we know y is positive, because the right hand side of the inequality was 4y is greater than 0. So cross multiplying, we get 4 is greater than 4y squared. Divide both sides by 4, 1 is greater than y squared. Or saying it the other way around, y squared is less than 1. And if y squared is less than 1, we know that y is going to be less than 1. So quantity A is smaller than quantity B. So that was solving it algebraically. Anyway, at the end of this hopefully very interesting video, I want you to be much more confident and fluent in using primes. Most of all, I want you to have those first 10 primes memorized. I want you to be very aware of the fact that 2 is the only even prime number. I want you to be confident at testing out if a number is prime and confident also at tackling even medium to hard level prime number questions.